I know this might stun you, but this is one of the few things that I absolutely, totally agree with the current leadership on in this country. Fantastic. Build huge tent cities. Build lots of them. In fact, don't stop building them until there's no more room. This is something I did a video on back in April. This is an article from 3 April. My video was 4 April, where Mr. Trump said that he was going to deploy the military to the southern border as opposed to building a wall. And I'll link you to my video talking about this. There's only 1,800 views on it, so I know nobody saw it. Talking about, this is domestic military investment. See, a long time ago, prior to Bill Clinton, we had an enormous, enormous domestic military. And what that did was it fostered trust between the civilian population of this country and the military. You didn't have nearly the conspiracy crap about black helicopters and all this other UN garbage. Because most people lived in and around and near these bases. And talked with and shopped with and went and did things with people that were stationed there. They were part of the community. When the Loma Prieta earthquake hit in San Francisco in 1989, we went off duty and we went out and we helped pick things up and we helped clean up Monterey and Gilroy and all the cities around there. I'm all for this. And if you still think this is some kind of a military invasion, you're going to have to argue with Mad Dog Mattis on this. Because when you look at how he talks about this, he's not sending down combat MOSs. There's no air cav, no artillery, no infantry of any kind. Nothing. Pilots, engineers, logistical personnel, medical folks. And it literally, and this is Fox. I mean, I don't know how much more farther to the right pro Trump you want to get here. And this is a quote from our leader. We're going to have tents. They're going to be very nice and they're going to wait. And if they don't get asylum, they get out. And I promise you, once they get here, they're going to be spending Thanksgiving here because that takes time. And quote, federal law prohibits the, and this is Fox. This isn't CNN prohibits the military from acting as a domestic police force, which means the troops going to the border cannot detain immigrants, seize drugs from smugglers, or have any direct involvement in stopping the caravan. Instead, their role largely will mirror that of the existing National Guard troops about 2,000 and all, deployed to the border over the past six months, including providing helicopter support for border missions, installing concrete barriers, and repairing and maintaining vehicles. I am all for that. Wonderful. Fantastic. The new troops are set to include military police, of course, area security, combat engineers, fantastic, helicopter companies equipped with advanced technology to help detect people at night. Zero problem with that. Whatsoever. Absolutely the exact right thing to do. This is how I would, if I were in charge, Solve the entire problem. I would do nothing but reactivate our domestic military machine, bring everybody home from all of these ridiculous deployments overseas, and start putting them down on the border. And I'd build one tent city after another tent city after another tent city. And then when these people started to show up, the women, the children, the actual migrants, get them into some cool air, get them some water, get them some medical care help these people out, and the bad actors, the ones that don't want to do that, they will wean themselves out real quick. It won't be a hard thing to do. And oh, by the way, another great idea, and I know this is a people like, why are you saying nice things about Trump? Well, this, this is a great idea. This is the Asplen Tree Company, $96 million penalty for hiring illegal aliens. I'd make it a felony if it was me. And I'd make $100 million like the minimum penalty and you shut down for 10 years. If you want to fix this, 
Go after the people that are making the money, paying these guys dirt wages. I live, obviously, in Florida. You would not believe what I see on a daily basis down here. You'll see trucks with six or eight of these guys pile out and one big, giant, fat, white guy driving it. And they'll go from place to place to place to place to place to place to place, cutting grass, trimming hedges, all this kind of stuff. And he'll roll out a big, fat wad of cash, pay him all a bunch of crap, and drive off in his $50,000 truck and leave them to either grab a uh, collective Uber or walk or bus or whatever. All over the place. Nobody does a damn thing about it. They do it right in front of the police. It's sickening. And it happens all over. It happens all over in this country. And they've alleged that if we would just take 20 million or whoever may that were here and just kick them out, we would have a labor shortage. A huge labor shortage. Because there ain't no kids coming out of high school dreaming of mowing lawns 40, 50 hours a week or folding sheets or cleaning toilets or doing anything else, any of this blue collar stuff. And if you make the allegation, well, then maybe we'll start paying workers like this more and get back to more of a blue-collar middle class, okay, big business is going to hate you. And the people who buy those products are going to hate you because the cost of a house is going to skyrocket when you've got to start paying the guys that carry the block, carry the brick, carry the 2 by 4 swing the hammers, $18, 20 25 $30 an hour. What do you think that's going to do to the price of a house? Because these guys that run these contracting companies, they're not going to take it out of their end. They're just going to pass it along. We don't have the workers. It's just that simple to do these jobs. We don't have them. And if you think we have them, you're out of your mind. We have people that want jobs. Yeah, but not these jobs. You see, you can't go out on this job and work for two hours and go, oh, my back hurts, and then, you know, go get on disability for it. It doesn't work that way. It's like, oh, you're hurt? Okay, get out of the field. Next batter up. Have a nice day. Bye. If you want to fix this problem, the reason they're coming here, there's work here. There's things to do here. There's ways to earn money here. There's not down there. Well, they do have jobs down there. You can be a prostitute. You can be a hitman. You can be a drug mule. You can be a lookout. Because down there in the hyper-capitalist states of El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Honduras, the drug cartels control everything, including the government. With our money. Of course. And it's a circular thing. Where does it come? Columbia. Fantastic idea. Absolutely all for it. Good job. I'll even say, good job, President. Good job. This is exactly how you fix the problem. You don't go down there with a bunch of bricklayers and block layers and start constructing this massive, enormous, idiotic wall. Go down there. Nice big tents with air conditioners. Give these people a couple of decent nights rest and a bath and a couple of nice meals and you would be amazed at what these people could bring to our country. You know? And process them right there. It's not like we don't have the work for them. And like I said, find the employers. Find the people that are doing this. I'll guarantee you right now, if we really went after this industry... You can kiss goodbye Winnebago. You can kiss goodbye all of the major RV manufacturers because they do nothing but hire these cats. And all the way through Arizona, Florida, Texas, there wouldn't be anybody riding those weed eaters and those mowers and those air blowers, painting houses, chopping down trees, trimming limbs, it, there's just not people in America that are willing to do those jobs. And it's sad. I mean, you can debate whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it just is. That's why they're here, and that's why they're hired.
You know, it's business 101. Businesses don't want to pay living wages. They don't. And that's how you know who's hiring them, because the people that are so against raising minimum wages to 10 or 15 or 20 bucks an hour are the same people that are hiring these people. And they will get away with whatever they can get away with. And these people know that they can't file an unemployment claim. They can't file a, a worker's compensation claim if they get hurt or they get injured or something happens to them that's heinous or horrible. They're slaves. They're modern-day slavery, basically. With just a little bit of a stipend so they can, you know, come back to work tomorrow so they don't starve. I mean, even slave owners <laughs> fed their slaves. Gave them place to stay. Gave them clothes. Which sometimes our employers don't even give them enough money to cover that. So, you know, they're not coming here because... uh they just want to sit on a couch somewhere and do nothing. It's not in their nature. It's not in their psyche. It's not part of their culture. I mean, there's exceptions that prove the rule. But we have a huge market. A huge market. The moving industry is one of them. That hires these guys. They'll put three or four of these guys, eight bucks an hour on a truck all day. Have one guy who drives the truck. One legal guy. And people are used to paying cheap rates. All my sons moving, United Van Lines. They're all over the place. But if you want to fix it, the president took a good first step here. Let's see if he can follow through. But like I said, we covered this back in April. This was a good idea. We just need to follow through with it. So, tomorrow's video, by the way, Colombia is still barking for war. They are putting the feelers out, saying, you know what, Brazil, if, if you invade first, we'll invade second. It's what they want to do. So, Duque hasn't changed his mind. Bolsonaro, though, has had a conversation with Russia. So, we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.